Hi, I'm Dr. Paul Leahy. I'm one of the plastic surgeons here at Monarch Plastic Surgery based in Leewood, Kansas. Uh, this is uh, another video in the series we're trying to put together to help provide patients with some generalized education about uh, what the consultation process might be like for a variety of procedures. And um, this particular segment is going to be addressing breast reduction surgery and uh, uh, sometimes breast lifting surgery, in other words, it's also called mastopexy. Uh, a lot of these same principles will apply to breast reduction and sometimes we're using breast lift surgery along with our breast augmentation or breast implant surgery. And so if that's something you're considering and um, the, the position of the nipple happens to be lower than would be ideal or there's excess skin, sometimes we're combining breast augmentation with breast lift surgery. And so you might um, benefit from watching this video as well. But I'd like to focus on the patient that's uh, coming to see us with symptoms related to large breast size. Uh, the medical term for that is called macromastia. And so the typical symptoms that we see uh, people complain about are going to be problems um, where the bra strap rubs on the shoulder, um, neck and upper back pain are very, very common things, rashes that develop underneath the breast, um, particularly worse in the summertime, um, and just generalized discomfort with the breast. Um, so breast reduction surgery is extremely common, um, particularly in our practice. Um, I'd say we almost do just as much of that as we do breast augmentation surgery, or in other words, uh, breast enlargement surgery. So um, the process typically starts with patients seeing their primary care physician or else uh, coming directly to see us with these symptoms, um, interested in breast reduction. So let me try to give you some idea what the process might be like when you come to see us. So um, first of all, you'll um, we'll go over your medical history, make sure that if you have any major medical problems that they're under good control and that your primary physician is watching all of those things. Uh, uh, being a smoker with this operation is not a good idea. So uh, we really limit um, surgery at least three months before and after. Um, we wouldn't want to have any um, cigarette smoking during that time. Uh, the complication rates in that scenario are very high. Uh, I want to make sure you had an updated mammogram, make sure everything, um, there are no issues that need to be sorted out in terms of breast cancer. And um, uh, in terms of pregnancy, um, if you um, have recently been pregnant and are, are breastfeeding, you want to make sure that we have at least three months or so of time in, uh, between stopping lactation before carrying out surgery. And if you have plans for future pregnancies, breast reduction surgery um, has some downsides uh, for folks like that, and so we need to, to go over that. Um, some of the biggest issues in, in that um, category are going to be uh, the ability to breastfeed afterwards and changes in the sensation to the nipple. Um, so we try to use techniques that can preserve those things, but it's not always possible, and so we need to, to go over that in your consultation. Um, so then we would um, uh, we'd interview you for all the symptoms that you're having, um, the bras that you're wearing, uh, and kind of where you're wanting to go with this in terms of sizing. We can never ever guarantee a certain cup size. Uh, really the goal uh, for the plastic surgeon and the patient are to try to get something that's more reasonable uh, and matches the rest of your figure. <clears throat> so for each patient, that's gonna be a little bit different. And um, again, we'll try to cover that with you. So um, the next step will be the examination process. And so during that time, we will take a variety of measurements. Uh, we'll take photographs to help document the problems that you're having. And um, that helps us to make at least some educated guess on how much weight, measured in grams generally, that we need to remove during surgery from each breast to help get rid of or at least minimize your symptoms. Um, it, it is a guess, uh, but um, you know, over time of doing this, you get a little bit better at doing that, and most insurance companies have sort of a, a minimum weight that they're looking for based on your height and your weight, and so we can um, help sort through that process. Now, um, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to, uh, there are certainly are limits on how small you can make uh, the patient, actually, um, and that has to do with trying to preserve those nerves and the blood vessels that keep the nipple and the areola alive. And so, uh, again, like I say, there's some limit to how small you can go. But generally, if you were to look at all the plastic surgery procedures that are out there, breast reduction surgery, um, I would say, carries one of the highest satisfaction rates of anything that we do. Uh, well, high, well done high volume studies, 
suggests somewhere in the 96, 97, 98 percent of women, if you're asked about it after you're all healed up, three, six months later maybe, would you do this operation again or would you, or would you recommend it to a friend or family member? That many people would say yes, absolutely. Uh, and I definitely would say that's the, the case for my patients. Uh, some of the happiest patients we have are our breast reduction patients. And I think that's just because it's so effective at dealing with the symptoms that people present with. Um, and oftentimes we can generate a very nice look and, and hopefully something that's very aesthetic and balanced. The, um, the surgery itself takes about three hours to do. It's something you're completely asleep for. That's called general anesthesia. You uh, recover in the recovery area for about an hour and a half. And most of our patients get to go home after surgery. There are scenarios in which people might spend one night. Uh, some surgeons like to use drainage tubes. I uh, try not to do that if at all possible. Um, and then we would be seeing you back in the office the next day. Typically we're using suture or stitch material that dissolves or absorbs on its own. The incisions are covered with specialized um, sterile dressings. And then uh, we have you wrapped in an ace wrap kind of like this uh, around, around the top. Then um, the next day, we can generally let folks think about taking a shower about 24, 48 hours after surgery. And then you switch over to a sports bra, which most people will kind of wear day and night uh, for about a week or so, letting things heal. Um, it's uncomfortable for sure. I don't want to sugarcoat it, but I'm usually surprised how people do with this. Uh, uh, super awful, terrible pain is not a real common thing after breast reduction surgery. You will have medications from us to help uh, minimize some of those symptoms, but at least for me in my practice, I try to get people over quickly to things like Advil, Aleve, Motrin, Ibuprofen, plain Tylenol, those sorts of things um, I think can provide every bit as good a pain relief without some of the side effects that the narcotics can sometimes leave you with. And then we generally will see you at about uh, week one, maybe about a month, um, three months, six months, a year, and then um, beyond that only as needed. Um, provided everything is healing appropriately. Um, you still need to get mammograms yearly um, and, and make sure all of that is watched. And then we just see it back, you know, if there's any problems that develop. So uh, during the consultation, we can go over the um, uh, American Society of Plastic Surgeons um, consent form. In there are, are many things, and a lot of which are scary. But um, I just wanted to point out some of the things that are more common that we really see. So for breast reduction surgery, I think far and away, at least for me, the biggest complication is what we call wound healing problems. So that's gonna be little areas along the incision line that just don't heal correctly. They might separate a little bit. You can have drainage. Um, oftentimes that's something that's easily manageable by using gauze or a maxi pad um, and your bra. Um, I try to minimize the use of a bunch of creams and ointments and that sort of thing. Um, Fortunately, infection after breast reduction is very, very um, uncommon, but certainly we want to watch for those symptoms. Uh, people can get some allergic reactions to some of the adhesives that we use during the surgery and for the dressings, we're watching for that. Um, and then pain. And uh, as I mentioned, it's usually not a terribly awful, uh, painful thing, but something that we may need to use some continued um, prescription medications to help um, treat. Uh, we want you back to your life as soon as possible. That means, um, Hopefully you can get out and even do a little walking that first week. Maybe week two or three, starting to do some light jogging as long as you have a good supportive bra on. And then, um, you know, most folks I'd say are off of work for somewhere between a week and a half and three weeks, just depends on what sort of a work, you know, what kind of job environment that you have. And we'll help you with that process as well. Um, but again, like I say, by and large, um, I'm really impressed with how women do this, with this process. Um, it's a fun surgery for plastic surgeons to do. It employs a lot of the techniques that we learn um, and uh, hopefully, hopefully helping people functionally as well as aesthetically as well. So that's sort of the basics of breast reduction consultation. Um, and uh, if you have questions, please reach out to us at any time. And we look forward to meeting you. Thanks.